Back in the time when the girls division was still referred to as powder puffs, there was one particular girl whose speed and style set the standard for the future of the pro women's class. Her name was Kathy Shackle, and under the guidance of her New Jersey mentor, the late great Hall of Famer Charlie Litsky, she became a big part of the original Shimano factory team, tearing up tracks all across the East Coast. Kathy went on to tally up an impressive 55 career win. Along with those victories came three NBL national number one titles, two world championships, and even a European championship. Upon her urging, she led the formation of the world's first women's pro class in 1985, and then proceeded to earn the NBL number one women's pro title in its first two years. The fact that Kathy was rad enough to roost all over the November 1979 issue of BMX Plus stands alone. Without a doubt, Kathy set the tone for future generations of girl racers, showing them not only girls can jump and even get rad like the boys, but sometimes you can even beat them. Please stand up and let me hear it for your 2015 woman inductee, Miss Kathy Shackle. I'm so honored and excited to be here and to be inducted into the BMX Hall of Fame. It was a highly accomplished women's category this year, and I'm truly, truly humbled. To stand here and see this beautiful facility, the Olympic Flame, and uh, to see how far BMX has come is really, really amazing. I went to Craigmere BMX uh, to take pictures, and the boys thought it'd be funny to sign me up, see, you know, to race the track. So um, I came in third place. After that, I, I think I'm, they're probably not laughing now, but <laughs> um, I came in third place, and then I started to, uh, got a sponsorship from Shimano, began to race at a national level. Um, some of my highlights, as you can see, was the cover, the cover of BMX Plus, which is a huge honor for me. Um, I remember going down to the bike shop to see it in print. Um, and 1982 also was a wonderful, wonderful year for me. I was national, national European and uh, world champion that year. I actually got to go overseas and uh, represent America um, and bring back the Anglo-American Cup, which was about as close as you could get to the Olympics back in the day. <laughs> After racing for many years and, and high school graduation kind of creeping up, there was some talk within the NBL of uh, starting a women's pro class. I remember going to one of the races and to hope that there would be another girl to sign up, and um, there wasn't. So I, I was actually one of the, the, the first girl to apply for a pro license and having to roll off the gate with the B pro class to actually help to establish the class. I grew up in the same town as Leapin' Charlie Litsky. May he rest in peace. Yeah, yeah Leapin'. <laughs> Give it up for Leapin'. I remember when he told me Shimano was getting an East Coast team. I remember when he called me from California to tell me that I got on the cover of BMX Plus. And I remember, you know, any race that I was at, you know, any national event, Charlie was always the first one running down the finish line and congratulate me. He made me feel like a superstar. So thank you. Thank you, Leapin. I would always like to thank USA BMX, Shimano, Sherry Elliott, Deanna Jameson Edwards, and my BMX family who took out the time to, out of their lives to come here and celebrate with me tonight. So thank you very much. Where's Eddie King? Eddie, here's your question. Here's the answer. Fluffy, where did the nickname come from, right? Uh, well, I, when I got on the cover of BMX Plus, sprint down to the bike shop, and uh, I remember John Russo who worked on my bike back then. You know, I was working on my bike, and Kathy, you know, she's tough. She's a powder puff. She's so smooth, they should call her Fluff. Well, they called up the magazine and put Fluffy in quotes. And then since then, it just it stuck like glue. Um, BMX has given me so much. Um, it took a very shy girl, built up my self-esteem, gave me a work ethic. Um, and it just, it, it taught me how, you know, you get out what you put into things. You know, you work hard 
and it's just just amazing what what the sport even to this day 30 day, 30 years later still it's still giving it also gave me my career as a as a physical therapist assistant i actually hurt my knee racing bikes and um, went to therapy and got interested in physical therapy bmx bonds us all together and it was a very tough year we've lost a lot of legends this year i'm going to speak of two powder puffs from my era Kim Johnson and Deanna Jamison Edwards. <laughs> Kim and I didn't race very often together. Uh, I was from New Jersey, she was from California, but you know, I knew I saw her up on the gate. I knew I had to be on the top of my game uh, to beat her or maybe not beat her, depending on uh, you know, the outcome of the race. You know, we connected, as so many do, through Facebook and um, I was very, very sad you know, to hear of her passing. Deanna and I never raced against each other. Deanna was uh, in the younger class than, my, than me. Um, but um, what a dynamic, dynamic woman. Your inductee from last year. She was taken way, way too soon. Um, I, I wanted to thank her for nominating me. I know that uh, she would be super, super excited for me to stand here tonight. Um, but now, Deanna, I thank your family. I wear this fearless bracelet in honor of you, my powder puff sister. Congratulations to all the inductees tonight. I am super honored to be a member of the BMX Hall of Fame. It's something I'll cherish forever. Thank you. Kathy, that was awesome. Congratulations to you and your family and to your competitors and all the powder puffs out there that have ever raced a bike. I think tonight we can let that phrase go. Does that be okay? All right. We're going to bring it to a close.